very vestigial relief. I know I'm a pain in the ass with these videos, but I hope you just spend the next four minutes just to have a little look at this video. And the reason this video is coming across to you, it's a very, very important thing, well, I, I think it is. And what I'm finding is we're coming back to the old beauty LED panels. And the reason I'm coming back to the old beauty LED panels is because they keep getting offered to you, the electrician, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. This price, that price, this guarantee, that guarantee. I can debunk any guarantee that you think you, you can get. Totally. I look at the price and I can debunk that guarantee. And the reason I can do that is I've lived in China 11 years. I speak Chinese. I speak Chinese with engineers. I'm not going to speak Chinese on this video. I think that it's pointless to speak Chinese on this video. There is a way that you can make LED panels cheaper and cheaper. I'm going to explain today the differences between some panels. So I've got a cheap one here. I've got another couple of panels and I'm going to explain them one by one. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take one of the cheap ones. Okay, this one came with a load of screws all the way down the back, a cheap sheet steel back, and I'm, I've ripped it all apart so you can have a look at the components inside it. What I've basically done is taken the layers out so you know what they're, 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 they are. What you start with, the first thing they put in a panel when they're constructing it is the front diffuser. This one has got a very, very uh, poor quality PU front diffuser. That will go up, any testing on, on a TPA rating, that one will go up, or TPB, that one will go up in flames, it's not very good. It costs more, obviously, for a better diffuser. Second is the LED diodes. This one has got, if you have a look, it's got a very, very narrow diode here called a 4014 diode, which is a very na narrow, long diode, spaced on a very thin PCB into this very thin aluminium frame. This, this frame's very light, very, 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 very simple. Obviously, if you've got a narrow PCB and a 4014, the, diode, the heat's coming back into this frame. It's not actually dissipating uh, with this. It's not taking that out. So the, the heat stays in this frame. Then what they do is they put what we call the light guide plate. Now there are two types of light guide plate. There is a light guide plate that is a virgin acrylic from imported from Japan, which is a high quality. Some Taiwanese light guide plate manufacturers as well. It comes in different thicknesses, obviously, 2mm, 3mm, 4mm. If you've got a 2mm light guide plate, like this one is, it's a, a light guide plate is basically a dot matrix printed uh, reflectance, the light comes in, it reflects forward. If you've got 2mm, what you're actually getting is an SDCM over 6 or 7. So you can't really get a good colour tolerance, SDCM is to do with the colour tolerance, you can't get a good toler colour tolerance on your panel. And also, it's quite harsh on the eyes. So that's a very cheap one. Now, light guide plate's important and it obviously adds value to the cost of the bill of materials. So we will use a minimum 3mm in our construction. So again, they get this and they just jam sandwich it shut. The, 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 the cable can quite easily rip out of the panel, any yanking on there, you can cut your fingers. The driver looks okay, but it's got no approvals, it's got no barcoding, it's just a very basic CE approved driver, this one. Now I come on to our panels, <clears throat> and the reason I do that is for uh, good points. Firstly, the driver, fully TUVGS approved, it's barcoded. We can scan this or get the barcode and we can tell the day of manufacture. That will tell us the exact components that were placed on that on the day, who QC'd it, who checked it, everything. We look at the strain relief. So the strain relief will not yank out of that corner. You cannot yank these cables out the corner. If you want to put a suspended, what you should do when they're in the ceiling is a drop ceiling. You should have one cable tied up to the ceiling. And if you want to do that, sometimes on this it's quite difficult with stupid tabs. So what we have is we have a nice little part you just put onto the runner rail and then you screw down and lock in. Nice and easy, takes a minute. But it takes less than that to put your lock in tight. With our panels, it's a, it's a quality aluminium frame and then we have two types the sheet steel but it's embedded in a bigger aluminium frame or a full aluminium sheet on two styles. They heat dissipate better. We use then a thicker PCB and a 2835 LM80 approved diode which has been much, got a much better uh, deterioration curve. So what I'm telling you is some people might give you a five year guarantee on a panel and want to sell, sell it to you cheap. Have you asked them the L70 uh, value on that? Not the diode, they might give you the LM80 on the diode. I mean, an in-situ test of that product 
to give you the full deterioration value. And the reason, when you walk away from a job and you fitted it, might be a nice office, might be whatever, you might want to save the person money. But will the Lux still be the same on the desk in, in a year's time? Lux Review have already done a review and they've said that uh, panels, to cheap panels, LIA have said that cheap panels will deteriorate after a thousand hours. Thousand hours, that quickly, they'll deteriorate. Our panels, I know the in-situ testing, we've got 54,000 hours on the L70 alone. That's the difference between quality and not quality. And there's a lot of this garbage coming out of China. I'm telling you, the electrician, why you should be very careful when looking at any, any offers. Anyway, that's my little thing on LED panels today. I hope you felt my sincerity, and it's about the market in general. Barry Aurelia, thank you.